So for this next video, um, I'm going to spend the whole thing talking about this slide here. This slide is what we call the, the light dependent reactions of, photos, of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis has kind of two parts to it. The first part is the light dependent part and the second part is the light independent part. So this is going to be the light dependent part of photosynthesis. So first of all, where are we? We are inside the chloroplast of a leaf. So this phospholipid bilayer that you can see here, um, hang on, I don't think you can see it. Let me get my laser pointer. All right. Um, this is a phospholipid bilayer. You can see it. And uh, that is the thylakoid. So remember those little baggies or flattened discs that are inside the chloroplast. Uh, this area here is the stroma. And then this area here is the inside of the thylakoid. The chloroplast itself is way around here, all the way around the outside, way off the screen. So we're looking at something incredibly tiny. Uh, the next thing to look at is this um, big blue lumpy thing here. This is one of the photosystems that we talked about in the previous um, little video, which are the groups of um, chlorophyll molecules. So they, this diagram shows them as like, you can see the little green circles here, and it shows them kind of embedded in a big blue lump. The big blue lump is supposed to be proteins that's kind of holding it all together. So that's why it looks a little weird. Um, but this is a photosystem of a bunch of chlorophyll molecules, and that's why you can see the light coming in here, striking the chlorophyll. So that's what we talked about in the last, the last little uh, set of slides. All right, so this whole story here, I'm gonna tell it like a story, uh, and it's sort of like a cycle, so it's hard to break in, but because uh, you can start anywhere. But I'm gonna start right here with photosystem one. So photosystem one is a group of chlorophyll molecules embedded in the thylakoid membrane right here. And the light, the photons come in, strike the chlorophyll molecules, they pass their energy, their excitement to the, the reaction center chlorophyll. And then the reaction center chlorophyll collects up enough energy from all of them until it gets so energized that it is able to burst out those two electrons. And now this yellow arrow shows the path of those electrons. And those electrons, are, once they're um, ejected from the chlorophyll, they get collected by um, this molecule here. We're going to call it the primary electron acceptor. Primary meaning the first um, molecule that's going to accept the electrons that were just released from the chlorophyll. Uh, and so then we have a little chain here where the electrons are passed from molecule to molecule to molecule. These are molecules that are embedded in the thylakoid membrane and they're basically like a bucket chain passing electrons from one to the next. And those electrons are highly energized because they were excited by light energy and they were they sort of exploded out of a chlorophyll molecule. Eventually, when the electrons get to the end of the bucket chain right here, um, a molecule comes along and picks them up. And that molecule is called NADP+. You're going to think of NADP+, as a taxi. It's a taxi that carries electrons where they need to go. NADP+, is the empty taxi, has no passengers in it. When it picks up the electrons, the electrons are its passengers, and now it's called NADPH. This is a full taxi. It's a molecule full of high energy electrons, and it's going to take those electrons where they need to go, which is the Calvin cycle, which is the next part of photosynthesis we'll get to at the end here. So what, what's happened so far? The uh, uh, light has come and struck the chlorophyll. The energy from light has been captured, and the vibrations have been funneled to the reaction center chlorophyll until it has enough vibrations and enough excitement to um, energize electrons and, and eject them. Those electrons are then passed from molecule to molecule to molecule until eventually they get picked up by a taxi. The taxi is called NADP+, and then this is the taxi with the electrons in it. Um, so actually, if I can, let's see if I can do this. Um, I'm going to write electrons here. Oop, I think I messed up. High energy electrons in this taxi. All right. So, um, I think I did something there. 
on that. I put on the subtitles. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to go back here to this photo system. We have a problem because this photo system is uh, missing a couple of electrons. It spat some out. So it's, it's, it's down a few electrons. What we're going to do is we're going to go backtrack this way and look at this one here. Here we have another photo system. Uh, this is photo system two. It looks very similar to photo system one and the same thing can happen to photo system two where um, light can come down from space from the sun and strike these chlorophyll molecules in photosystem two and the chlorophyll molecules are going to get excited they're going to pass their vibrations to the reaction center chlorophyll the reaction center chlorophyll is going to get so excited and so energized that it's going to explode out these two electrons and these two electrons can be passed from molecule to molecule to molecule until eventually they get to photosystem one and they can be used to fill in the gap where the electrons were originally lost from here. So this photosystem lost electrons over here. This photosystem is going to pass electrons to replace them. But now where's the problem? Now there's a problem with photosystem two because it gave its electrons to photosystem one. Photosystem one gave its electrons to NADPH. And now we're, we're down some electrons here. And what, so what happens here in photosystem two is that water molecules are taken and they are ripped apart. So this is happening inside the thylakoid of the chloroplast. Um, water molecules are pulled apart. Now thinking about water molecules, they're very stable. It's, uh, you know, we boiled them in lab and we couldn't break them down. They just stayed H2O. So this is something pretty hard to do and plants are doing it all the time. If you look at the plant, it doesn't look like anything dramatic is going on inside those leaves, but they are physically ripping apart water molecules um, as you watch them, which is pretty kind of cool to think about. And when the plant rips apart the water molecule, it releases electrons uh, from the bonds of that water molecule that it broke. And so it takes two electrons from water that it split apart uh, and those are what it uses to replace the electrons that it's lost down this, down this pathway. So let's backtrack one more time. This, these electrons get excited and get passed to NADPH. These electrons get excited and get passed to replace those electrons. And then water is ripped apart and electrons are pulled out to replace those electrons. All right. Uh, when um, water is ripped apart like this, um, not only are electrons created uh, or, or released, I'm not created, electrons are, are released, but also this is um, where the oxygen um, that is created as a waste product of photosynthesis comes from. So the oxygen that plants release into the atmosphere is oxygen that actually came from the water that the plants sucked up water through their roots put it into their leaves. In their leaves, they rip the water apart, take the electrons out, and then the oxygen that's left over is what they give off into the, into the atmosphere. The other part of the water molecule, once it's been disassembled like that, is some hydrogen ions. And you can see those here. So I'm just going to uh, jump forward a, a quick slide here. Um, when you have water inside the, um, inside the thylakoid, the water is ripped apart by photosystem um, two, some electrons are extracted and that go to the chlorophyll to, to make up the ones that they've lost. Some oxygen is created and that's the waste that's given off. And also a couple of hydrogen ions are released and um, those are going to hang out in the thylakoid right now. We're going to come back and see what happens to them right now. Okay, back to this slide. Sorry. This slide. All right, the last part that we haven't talked about yet on this slide is um, going on here with these purple arrows. So as those um, electrons are passed from photosystem two along this path to photosystem one, they start off with high energy. They're, they've been released from a highly excited chlorophyll. They're really excited, they're vibrating a lot. And as they're plast from these molecules, PQ, this big thing, and PC, th these have names, 
it's not important. Um, these molecules that pass the electrons along uh, actually squeeze out some of the energy for themselves from the electrons. So by the time the electrons get here, they have no energy left. They're still electrons, but they're not vibrating anymore. They're not super excited. It doesn't matter because photosystem one doesn't care. It just wants any old electrons to fill in for the electrons that it lost. Um, but when they came out of photosystem two, they're really excited. By the time they get here, they're not excited anymore. Where did all that excitement go? Um, the energy or the excitement was used by these molecules here. They use some of the energy from the electrons to pump or push hydrogen ions from the stroma out here through a channel and into the thylakoid space. So we're pumping or pushing hydrogen ions in here, in here. Now remember, hydrogen ions are charged. They cannot cross a membrane on their own because of their charge. So they're going to have to have a, a channel or a tunnel to go through. And in addition, they're not going to want to go in on their own because there are already a lot of hydrogens in here because of these ones that came from the water that was split. So the water that was split produced electrons, oxygen, and hydrogen ions. These hydrogen ions can't get out because they're trapped behind the membrane. They can't cross the membrane. And if you want to put more hydrogen ions in here, you're going to have to force them in because we currently have a gradient going on here. We're trying to accumulate a massive ton of hydrogen ions in this space. Some are coming from the water that was split and ripped apart, and some are being forced in extra by these, these pumps here. And they're actually, they have to be forced in. It takes energy to do that. The energy to push them in comes from these electrons. Uh, which are passing along here and these this PQ and PC molecules are squeezing energy out of the electrons and then using that energy to push hydrogen ions into this space. So at the end of this, you end up with a big puddle of hydrogen ions trapped inside the thylakoid. They're trapped, they can't get out, they have a charge, they can't cross the membrane. Luckily, though, the thylakoid very thoughtfully has placed this protein in its membrane. This uh, is an enzyme, and this enzyme is called ATP synthase. So this name is really helpful. It helps you remember exactly what this enzyme does. It's an enzyme, A's. All enzymes, name, most enzymes' names end in A's. Synth, it synthesizes. It's an enzyme that synthesizes or makes ATP. So this is a really cool enzyme. It's able to create molecules of ATP, and it does that by taking an ADP, adenosine diphosphate, plus an individual phosphate and gluing them together to make an adenosine triphosphate. So we start off with adenosine with two phosphates and we stick a third phosphate on the end to make it ATP. Uh, this enzyme ATP synthase only can do this though uh, when it's, um, spinning around. It actually has physically has to spin around like a little spindle. And what makes it spin is to have hydrogen ions moving through its core. So it's like a tunnel. It's like a turnstile. And so all these hydrogen ions are all trapped in this thylakoid space. They want to get out. They want to diffuse out. They don't like to be so crowded together. And the only way they can get out is through this tunnel. They can't get through this here because their charge. So they can't just wiggle their way out through the membrane. That's impossible. The only way for them to get out is through this tunnel. And as they go through this tunnel, they make it spin around. And as it spins around, they're able to take a, um, the enzyme is able to take ADP and glue it to P to make ATP. Uh, another analogy for this story I like to tell is if you think about the University of Phoenix or State Farm Stadium, uh, after a football game. There's 70,000 people inside the stadium. They all want to get out. They're all crowded together. They want to diffuse out across the valley and go home. Um, but the only way to get out of the stadium is through the few turnstiles, the exits that are provided. This is the exit from the stadium where the whole crowd, everyone's going to have to go through. And as people go through the turnstile, they make it spin around and you can capture that energy that's spinning. Um, and the cell captures it by spitting this enzyme and using that energy to stick together ATPs. 
And at the end of this whole process, what we've created is a whole bunch of high energy electrons, which are currently in a taxi to be taken where we need them to go. And we made some ATP. We're going to take those two things and use it in the last part of photosynthesis, which is called the Calvin cycle, also known as the light independent part of photosynthesis. So remember, the whole point of photosynthesis is to make glucose, but we haven't made any glucose yet. We haven't got to that part. What we have made is some ATP, and we have a whole bunch of electrons with a lot of energy that are stashed away in a taxi to be taken to where we need them. So the next set of slides will deal with the next part of, well, the last part of the story.